The Center for Marine Living Resources and Ecology (CMLRE) under the Ministry of Earth Sciences has a genesis in the Sagar Sampada cell which was established by the Government of India as a subordinate office of the erstwhile Department of Ocean Development for the purpose of managing the affairs of the fisheries and oceanographic research vessel Sagar Sampada. On 12th January 2001, it was renamed as CMLRE and given the mandate to inter alia monitor, coordinate and promote the implementation of various multi-institutional scientific research programs relating to marine living resources. FORV Sagar Sampada, 72-meter-long multi-purpose fishery oceanographic vessel constructed at Denmark, commissioned on 6 November 1984, function as the national platform for all marine living resources programs of CMLRE. The vessel has so far completed more than 350 scientific cruises in the Indian Ocean, including one cruise to the Indian Ocean sector of the Southern Ocean and two international cruises in Mauritius and Oman waters. The vessel is eye-strengthened to support India's scientific program in the Southern Ocean. The vessel has accommodation facilities for a complement of 59, which include 34 crew members of the Shipping Corporation of India and 25 scientific personnel and technicians. The vessel is equipped with satellite navigator for navigation and helipad for emergency landing of a helicopter. Sagar Sampada is the only research vessel currently available in India which can undertake deep sea fishery surveys along the Indian continental slope area from 200 to 1000 meter depth. These survey results are the first and perhaps the only available information on the deep sea fishery resources of Indian exclusive economic zone. Major scientific facilities on board are Conductivity Temperature Depth Profiler Sagar Sampada being a national facility has been utilized extensively by all the major user agencies in India including NIO, CMFRI, CIFT, ISRO, PRL, CIFE, NRSA, NPOL, NIFHAT, INCOIS, SIFNET, ZSI, IICT and various universities in India engaged with oceanographic research. The contribution of Sagar Sampada to fishery oceanography in India can best be described by stating that there can be no fishery oceanographer in India who have not participated in at least one cruise on board Sagar Sampada. Acoustic Doppler Current Profiler ADCP MPN Bongo and Valenet for sampling for secondary productivity Multi-frequency Echo Sounder EK60 Grab Dredge and Coder for benthic studies Fishery Gears Expo Model Trawl Fish and SSDT CV Sagar Sampada is the only vessel in India capable of trawl fishing around 1000 meter depths and the only vessel equipped with the state-of-the-art fishery acoustic detection systems and CAT sensors which is necessary for fishery stock assessment and to test the performance of newly designed fishing gears. Besides these, the vessel is well equipped with exclusive laboratories for chemical analysis, hydrographic studies, plankton and isotope studies, microbiology, biotechnology, fish analysis, meteorological studies and is well networked with a dedicated computer system. Sagar Sampada successfully undertook the first Indian quill expedition to the Antarctic waters 
during 1995-96 with scientists from Sea Fisheries Institute Poland to study the techno-economic feasibility of undertaking commercial krill for Euphasia superba exploitation from the Southern Oceans. Sagar Sampada had been the backbone of Indian oceanographic studies on living resources since 1984 and is further expected to continue for another five years until the proposed replacement with the new FORB. The organisms which live within or in close association with the sediments of the sea floor are known as benthos. They represent a wide variety of life ranging from microscopic bacteria to large organisms such as coral, starfishes and fishes. They are classified based on the size as microfauna, macrofauna and megafauna. Marine benthos, the organisms living in the bottom of the sea, involved in the process of mineralization through nutrient recycling, besides forming food for many demersal fishes, were also studied extensively. At national level, decadal scale changes in benthos is being monitored based on the studies conducted so far. Twelve new species of marine benthos have been discovered from the Indian Exclusive Economic Zone. Zooplankton are a diverse group of organisms which provide a crucial source of food to many large aquatic organisms such as fish and whales. Plankton is defined on ecological niche and are primarily classified based on functional groups and play an important role in the global carbon cycle. CMLRE carry out research on various size classes of plankton like microzooplankton and mesozooplankton. Harmful algal blooms or HABs are increasing in occurrence around the world. Extensive studies were conducted on the frequency and extent of harmful algal blooms that create adverse effect on marine biogeochemistry leading to enhanced greenhouse gases production. Around 448 species of microalgae were observed, of which 86 were bloom forming and about 45 were toxic species. A total of 7 hotspots of HABs have been noticed in the west coast of India. The Integrated Taxonomic Information System is a program initiated for consolidating the taxonomic information gathered through various MLR projects. The Census of Marine Life is an international initiative dedicated to documenting the diversity, distribution and abundance of past and present life in the world's oceans and for predicting the future state of marine life. Correct identification of living organisms is important for proper documentation and COML recommends DNA barcoding by mitochondrial gene cytochrome oxidase 1 as a standard tool for species identification. Correct identification of living organisms is important for proper documentation and the census of marine life recommends DNA barcoding.
As part of barcoding, approximately 800 tissue samples of different deep sea organisms have been collected till date and their DNA extracted and preserved as DNA bank. Totally 233 DNA barcodes have been created for deep sea fishes, shrimps, crabs and were submitted to NCBI. Many of these samples were sequenced for the first time from Indian exclusive economic zone. Thus studying and comparing the DNA sequences, we investigate the real identity of marine organisms. FORB Referral Centre was set up in 2000 for the preservation and storage of all samples collected through various cruises of the FORB Sagar Sampada. About 1130 voucher specimens of deep sea organisms assigned with a unique voucher ID and a database on each specimen. The protocol for labelling the specimens has been adapted from Sampling Biodiversity in Coastal Communities, published by the Natural Geography of Inshore Areas. Referral Centre maintains many unique specimens which has been described for the first time in the world. Several organisms from the deep sea have been reported for the first time from Indian Ocean. Unique and enigmatic invertebrates like deep sea pens, deep sea spiders, echinoderms and deep sea fishes are recorded for the first time from Indian Ocean. The FORB Data Centre was established in CMLRE in 2000 to archive all oceanographic and meteorological data gathered during the research surveys of Sagar Sampada and other vessel facilities utilised by CMLRE. The data includes weather parameters, vertical profiles on physical oceanographic parameters, acoustic data from multi-frequency eco-sounders, nutrients, dissolved oxygen, chlorophyll, abundance data, taxonomy of micro and mesozooplankton, fish eggs and larvae, benthos, deep scattering layer and deep sea demersal fishes. The Indian ornamental fish sector though small, is vibrant with potential for tremendous growth and employment generation. The ornamental fish export from India is mainly depending on wild caught species which caters to a small portion of the global market. Taking this into consideration and the availability of quality seawater, CMLRE has initiated a program on hatchery reproduction of marine ornamentals at Agathi Island, Lakshadweep since 2010. 